first up uh, on our panel, we have, uh, starting with uh, the, the creators of Horizon, we have Brandon Thomas. How you doing? Good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, and we have the artist of Horizon, we have Juan Gedeon. Uh, next up, uh, the writer of Manifest Destiny, we have Chris Dingus. Uh, and then finally, we have the artist for The Walking Dead, Charlie Adler. Uh, so we'll just be going over some of our books, talking about what's coming up. Uh, mostly these guys will be just talking about, you know, their books and, and, and uh, what's up ahead. And, and hopefully you can, uh, you know, learn some uh, cool stuff about the, uh, the coming year and, and beyond. Uh, so first up, we have Horizon. Uh, if you guys, what, uh, what exactly is Horizon about? If you want to... Um, spoiler alert, but I'll just go ahead and tell you. Uh, Horizon is, um, it's our take on the, uh, the classic alien invasion story in, uh, in the book. Earth is uh, dying out because of, you know, obviously, for obvious reasons. Uh, we've nearly extinguished all of the natural resources on our planet, so we've gone out into space to find a new place to live. We found the perfect, perfect place, but the aliens living there find out about our interests in their world, and so then they come to Earth to trap us here and prevent us from taking them over. So that's pretty much the, the loose premise of the book. And it's a really cool sci-fi conspiracy action thriller. Um, this guy, Juan's doing amazing, amazing artwork. We've got some amazing um, action sequences coming up. Character designs are amazing. And it's, a, it's been a lot of fun to work, work on. We've been uh, working on it for quite a while. I've actually turned in 12 scripts. So I'm done writing the entire first year of the book. And uh, this guy's working on Horizon 6 right now, mm -hmm. so we want to really get out ahead of it, build up a nice head of steam, and uh, get this book out for you guys. It's something we're really proud of. It just launched last week. Uh, we sold out of the first print already, and uh, the second print of one will be in stores the same day as issue two, which is August 17th. Very cool. What, what Brandon said. <laughs> <laughs> well, Juan, uh, you know, working uh, on Horizon and, and working on, you know, I've, I know you've worked at Marvel and, and all over. What, uh, so what do you like about working on Horizon and working, you know, at, at Skybound? Is there anything oh. that you particularly are enjoying or? Yeah, everything. Like, um, they gave me, like, free reign with the designs and everything. They trust, they trust my instincts and stuff. And um, Brandon gave me the character descriptions at first. I came up with a few ideas. Thankfully, they liked it. They liked them, and uh, and it's great. Like it feels like it doesn't feel like work. It's like it's fun. Uh, we talk with Brandon back and forth on Facebook or we text. Uh, we shoot ideas back and forth, and it's uh, they treat they treat us so well, so well, man. So I, I'm very happy. Yeah. We actually we have a, a preview of uh, issue two. We have uh, some of the early oh, cool. pages in issue two. Um, you know, just looking ahead, uh, is there anything that you particularly want to tease about what's what's coming up in the book, or anything that you can, without spoiling anything, you know? Uh, well, this this particular sequence is actually the uh, the introduction of uh, another one of our main characters in the book. Uh, issue one uh, followed the kind of journey of the commander of this uh, the strike team, Commander Zaya Malin. And this right here is the introduction of uh, Sharif Davix, who is uh, Zaya's sometimes friend, <laughs> sometimes enemy. They have a really, uh, a really great uh, kind of like, um, kind of estranged friends in, in, in certain senses, but um, I'm really excited to assemble the entire team. So by the time you get to the end of issue two, you'll have met the, the four main characters. And once they get into a room and uh, I'm able to kind of, you know, fire off some, some dialogue back and forth between them, the book really kind of takes on a, a different, more vibrant life. So I'm, I'm really excited to, uh, to introduce the rest of the cast. And there's a, there's a, lot, of, uh, there's a lot of cool stuff coming. And we actually have, uh, we have the covers for three and four, which take us up to October. And we also, uh, so this is the first time we're showing it, we have the cover for number five. There we go. Uh, which will be out in, uh, that is a November book. That's, that'll be out in November. Um, you know, one, looking ahead, is there, is there any, you know, what you've already drawn, what you're about to draw, is there anything that you're particularly, you know, any character, any sequence, anything that you're really excited about uh, working on? Yeah, I mean, um, when you do, when I draw comics, uh, like my favorite thing is action. 
uh, action sequences and the uh, character design and monsters. If it was up to me, Horizon would be all monsters. <laughs> that's not very marketable, but that's what I would do. But fortunately, Brandon knows better, so uh, so he takes care of. Uh, I'm working the, in some the, monsters. The, so. the dialogues, the human, the relationships and stuff, um, and yeah, I think we have a. I'm working on issue six now, and there's a very cool uh, action sequence mm -hmm. with uh, transformation in the suits and stuff that I think we haven't shown any of that. Yeah, no, no. no. Yeah, so it's going to be pretty cool. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm most excited about. Yeah. Yeah, the pages are beautiful, and the color oh, thanks, the, the colors are beautiful as well. It's, it's, it's a gorgeous book. How many people have read it? How many people have checked it out? All right, hey. got a few. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. we actually we have uh, variants of number one uh, at the booth, uh, the Skybound booth downstairs. So if you guys get a chance, go go check it out. Go pick it up. It's it's a, a wonderful book. I, I love this book. So Thanks, check it out. Uh, so next up we have Outcast. Uh, how many people are are reading the book, watching the show? How many people are in the world of Outcast? All right, all right. Oh, on me. <laughs> <laughs> So as you've seen, you know, in, in Outcast uh, coming up, it's it's you know we've kept it sort of mysterious. You know, Kyle is is sort of not sure what the the nature of, of these possessions are, and, and we're not sure exactly what what Sydney's intentions are. And so, you know, coming up in the uh, in the next few issues, you're gonna we're gonna start peeling back the curtain. It's it's you know uh, Robert really plans to start showing us sort of how this world works and how things come along. And, and it's, uh, you know, one of those things that we're, you're going to start to learn a lot of information in these next few issues. So it's, it's definitely, you know, if you are, if you're curious, you know, what's, what's coming and, and, and how it all fits together, you really, really should be picking up these issues. Uh, 19 was the start of the new arc, so you can, you know, start, that's in stores now, so you can start with that and, and um, you know, really get an idea of, of What's what's coming, um, and and you know if you're watching the show, it's it's a great place to jump on and sort of get an idea of, of where things are headed as well. So um, you know check it out. Outcast is uh, gonna get good. It's it's gonna get good. Um, next up uh, we have Birthright. Uh, who's reading Birthright? Who's who's a fan of Birthright? All right, so we have a few. Uh, so with Birthright, we uh, it's. Josh has some really, really cool stuff coming up. Um, we're gonna, you know, uh, just to tease a few things, um, you know, we have uh, some stuff with Brennan, you know, uh, there's, there's something going on with Brennan. Um, I don't know if you, who's reading the book, but as you know, there's, we're gonna learn more about uh, uh, Brennan and, and um, you know, we're going to, there's, you're, there's gonna be a confrontation with Samuel coming up um, that I think people are really, really gonna wanna see. Um, it's definitely a thing that, um, you know, I love this book and I love what's happened so far, but what Josh is doing now is some of, I think, the most exciting stuff going on, the, on in the book. And it's really, you're going to start seeing a lot of the, the uh, world building um, uh, taking place and really start to fill in a lot of the pieces. Um, one of the other things that, that um, you know, you're, you're going to see is the uh, relationship between Wendy and Raya. You know, it's this super weird in-law relationship, uh, and you're going to start seeing that sort of built up, and, and you're going to see a little more of that. So it's definitely, it's, I, I honestly, I think I like the issues that are coming up more than the stuff that's come before it. Just, it's every issue I like more than the last. So I, I hope everybody, you know, checks it out and, and continues to read. Um, moving forward, we have uh, Invincible. Uh, who, uh, who's reading Invincible? All right, yeah, all right, cool. Um, so, Invincible, we have uh, Corey Walker on for a uh, brief arc. Corey's come back, um, and, and uh, he, is, he is absolutely knocking it out of the book. Um, he's doing amazing work. Um, but uh, leading up into October, we are, um, you know, it's, we are leading into a big 12-part arc, uh, the end of all things. Um, I, when I say that it is one of the biggest arcs Invincible has done, I mean it. Uh, absolutely, people should check it out. If you aren't reading it, if you're interested in it, check out Invincible. Uh, end of all things is going to be a big story for the book. Um, and it's, it, that will, uh, you know, will, this will lead up to that. So you really, really, really want to check it out. Um, next up, we have Manifest Destiny. Uh, who out here is reading Manifest Destiny? All right. Uh, uh, Chris, do you want to give a brief explanation of, of what Manifest Destiny is for those who aren't reading it? Uh, Manifest Destiny is the true 
history of what <laughs> happened uh, when Lewis and Clark went west. Uh, it was actually that book that you're forced to read in middle school is uh, the first big lie that the American government uh, sold the people and actually Lewis and Clark were um, leading a black ops mission to kill all of the monsters that lie west of the Mississippi River. Very cool, very cool. And, and right now we are in the middle of the Sasquatch arc. Right, we, uh, issue 21 I believe came out last Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're right smack dab in the middle of uh, our characters uh, finding out about an earlier expedition that came up against um, Sasquatch and uh, it did not go very well for them. But Lewis and Clark are able to take that information and kind of uh, it helps them fight for their life. So with a, with a book like Manifest Destiny and, and you know, re researching the Lewis and Clark and the, and the expeditions and things like that, is there anything that you haven't included yet that you're, that you're really you, you're wanting to include? Is there anything that you can maybe tease for... for um, factual? You mean factual stuff or just... Just anything that you... Nonsense I'm making Just up. nonsense you're making. Yeah, yeah. Just oh, yeah. There's tons of, there's tons of, <laughs> there's tons of stuff that I'm going to completely lie about. And uh, I've got many issues of... of stupid stuff coming for everyone, and violence, and uh, all kinds of fun stuff. Very cool, very cool. So is, uh, would you say Sasquatch is your, is your favorite arc so far, or what, uh, what, what about it have you, have you liked the most so far? Um, I, real, I, I always, the, my favorite thing about this book is writing something, and then next thing you know, Matt Roberts and the art team, you start getting back this, these spectacular pages. So it's always fun to just go, it's, Bigfoot, but he's also a Cyclops and this and that, and then you just you get these stunning pages back. So it's always my favorite part. I, you know, I'm I'm curious myself. Have you had a, a favorite monster that you've included in the series? I've always I've just been curious my personally. Um, I still love the the Buffalo Minotaur that we started the book with, and I loved I I, I created these little monsters called the Fezron out of hate for Ewoks. And I was like, I'm going, to <laughs> I'm going to destroy these monsters. And then I fell in love with them as I was writing them. But then the time came to massacre them all. And I felt, I felt terrible about it. Everybody that had to draw it and color it and ink it felt really bad about it. But we did it anyway. It's a, it's a great book. Sasquatch is, I, I love this arc. I love anything with Sasquatches in it really are, are <laughs> great. So it's, it's, it's been a, a pleasure seeing the, the issues come in. Thanks. Um, and we actually have some preview pages. We have a few uh, preview pages from 22. Just some, a little uh, brief tease. Matt Roberts, uh, beautiful art uh, up on screen. Um, but uh, check it out. If you, if you haven't been checking it out, Sasquatch is a great place to jump on and, and really dig in and, and find out what this book is about. Uh, next up, we have Thief of Thieves. Uh, Thief of Thieves, who, who out there is reading it? All right. Cool, cool. Uh, so Thief of Thieves right now is in the middle of uh, the arc Gold Rush. Um, Gold Rush, we sort of, uh, you know, it's one of those things where, where uh, Conrad is sort of at the top of his game. He is, he is, you know, this, he's comfortable with where he's at. He doesn't feel he needs to compete. And so with Thief of Thieves, we introduce uh, these two Russian brothers who uh, are putting together what I like to call and, and what is sort of the cannonball run of thieves. It's bringing together thieves from around the world to uh, basically they're looking to steal this, this object called Gold Rush and um, it's sort of about them putting this, these, these thieves together and just seeing them play off of each other and seeing who ends up being the top thief. And so it's, it's, you know, it's one of those things that um, we sort of see, uh, uh, you know, Conrad, his, his demons get the better of him, and, and it's one of those things where, you know, initially he, he doesn't want to compete, but, um, you know, I, he, can't, he can't turn down a challenge, and so we get to see uh, some of uh, him, you know, sort of uh, back on his heels a little bit, which is something I don't think, you know, it's, it's we haven't seen it like this. Uh, we haven't seen Conrad sort of push to the edge like this, and we actually, we have, we just got this in, we have a preview, this is cover 37. Um, if you actually, if you look, we have uh, Conrad falling through each cover. I don't know if anybody else has caught that, but he, in the first issue of the arc, he was, we had him falling, and in each subsequent uh, cover, he's been falling through, and finally, we have 37, where uh, he hits rock bottom. And I think with 37, you are really, really gonna see him hit rock bottom. Um, so, 
it's it's definitely uh, things will get pretty dark before they get better. Um, so you know, keep keep an eye on it and, and check it out. Um, Next up, we have a series that is actually premiering next month, um, Demonic, uh, by Christopher Sabella and Nico Walter. Um, Demonic is, is a really interesting series. It's sort of about what, um, what would you give up and, and, and what would you, would you sell your soul to save your family? That's sort of the, the main conceit of it. And it's, it's a really dark, really screwed up series. It's one of the darkest series I've read. Uh, you know, I, I love Sabella, but I had to, I had to question him after, uh, after <laughs> reading it. Um, just, just to the dark places it goes. And, and actually, we have some of Nico's art up there uh, for issue one. Um, I don't know if, if you've, you've seen it, but in, uh, in the back of uh, the, the Skybound books currently, we've been previewing it. So if you... If it sounds like something you're interested in, if the art has grabbed you, uh, check it out. It's an amazing, amazing series. Uh, I, I dig the heck out of the series. Um, so you know, it's it's, it's a screwed up book, but it's it's it's, you know, I, I think it's a story that only Skybound could do. So so check it out. Um, next up, we have a book that we actually just announced. We just announced Green Valley uh, from Max Landis and Giuseppe Camincoli. Um Giuseppe is. Absolutely knocking out of the park, and we have some preview art here for it. Um, so it's Green Valley is you know knights, uh, you know knights of valor, and, and sort of it's it's a, a, a sword and sorcery, you know dragons uh, sort of story. But the only problem is uh, sorcery and dragons don't really exist. So it's uh, it, it there's a there's a, a, a conceit to the story that that I can't unfortunately reveal. But it's, it's one of those things where not everything is as it seems. If it's, you know, if there's magic, if there's dragons, if there's different things like that, it's, it's not exactly what it seems. Um, the first issue is great. Um, we actually, uh, so we printed up before the convention, and I have a few of them, uh, we printed up ash cans of the first issue. It's a black and white, these are just out. This isn't out until October. Um, so what I'll do is anybody that asks a question uh, will get a copy of Green Valley before they leave. So you get to read it before it hits shelves, months before it hits shelves. So uh, that is something to look forward to. But um, it's it's just it's a wonderful series. And Max, I, I don't know if uh, you know how many of you are fans of Max, but Max has absolutely just been blowing up. I mean, you know, he he wrote Chronicle and an American Ultra, and he's just this is one of my favorite things from him. It is, it is bizarre and funny and really heartwarming and it's just, it's wonderfully done. And I, I honestly think it's one of the best looking series we do. It's, it's gorgeous. Um, you know, every page looks this beautiful. Um, it's just, it's absolutely wonderful. If you have any interest in, you know, that genre, sword and sorcery, anything like that, please, please, please check it out. Um, and next up, uh, we have The Walking Dead. Uh, Charlie, do you wanna, how many, how many people are caught up? How many people read 156? How many people read this comic? <laughs> oh, uh, not, not many. Oh, okay. <laughs> Charlie, uh, do you want to talk a little bit about 156? Uh, maybe without... Uh, well, without the spoiler. <laughs> uh, well, that's tricky. Without the spoiler. Um, um, uh, well, kind of, kind of cool stuff happens in issue 56. I think, I think we all... Well, who's read issue 56? Uh, 156, sorry. We're, we're all Ooh, friends. Oh, not that many. All right, so uh, who would be interested to know what's in 156? <laughs> Tell them. <laughs> no one. All right. <laughs> oh, no, I can't. I can't. Right, right. I can't. I can't. <laughs> Something quite shocking happens, that's for sure. Um, and then we go into the Whisperer War. Um, where there's some whisperers and there's a war. <laughs> <laughs> and lots of stuff happens. And there's some people fighting and there's some people dying. <laughs> and stuff. So, you know, you're, you're pretty far into, you're pretty far ahead at this point. You, you, uh, uh, Charlie is one of the fastest artists uh, that I have ever seen work. You, like, you, it amazes me how quickly you're able to, to, to get through a book. Um, you know, without giving anything away, do you have a, a favorite uh, character from Whisperer War that, you, that, you know, uh, that you've been drawing? Anything, a favorite moment maybe without, without giving too much away? <laughs> well, uh, I, think, I think the moment is in 156. Okay. But um, uh, I, I'm just really enjoying getting back with Negan again after after his sort of slight absence. He's been around, obviously, but, you know, trapped in a prison, sort of making sarky comments every sort of odd issue is, uh, you know, 
that's not really being back, but now he's back full on. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of cool to have him return. So, you know, looking, looking back over the last, you know, year or so of the book, or the last two years of the book, is there, is there a favorite moment that you've drawn? In the last 12 years. Out? Oh, we got to connect to the internet. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I didn't draw that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do, you have, do you have something that you've particularly enjoyed uh, doing in the, in the book? Oh. Um, actually, yeah, um, which is not actually in the main book. Um, I've really, really enjoyed drawing the, the Negan strip for Image Plus. Uh, part. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said when I read the first few uh, issues uh, that Robert wrote, I emailed him back straight away and said, Robert, you, you, you do realize you've written a Walking Dead version of the first 10 minutes of Up. <laughs> and, uh, oh, wow. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I won't tell you if no one's read it. Yeah, I won't tell you what happens. But. It, it, seriously, it just really got me. I think it's one of the best bits of writing he's ever done. Um, so if you haven't picked it up, if you want to see Robert Kirkman and Fire on all cylinders, you know, that's, that's where it's happening. Um, but yeah, uh, and, and also, I'm back inking it as well, which is good. Uh, no, I'm, yeah. That sounds awful, that, because that sounds like I hate Stefano's inking, but that's so far from the truth. But. Um, you know, it's, I am, I've always been my own best inker and, um, you know, it's, it's with, with the, with the regular series, it's, it's great to have Stefano and he's doing an amazing job, uh, inking over my pencils, uh, and I couldn't wish for anybody better, but, uh, it's, it is a pleasure to get back and actually finish my own work as well. So I'm sort of having the best of both worlds at the minute. So it's, it's, you know, with, with the end of Walking Dead season six and, and Negan showing up, I have to ask you, is it weird seeing so many people carrying Lucille, seeing Negan's walking around the convention? Is that strange to you? Yeah, well, I mean, I've seen the odd Negan before, obviously before the, the show. Uh, obviously, it's just gone through the roof now. Um, it was a bit weird when we did the Walking Dead actual panel with Robert that there was a little boy, he couldn't have been more than five or six, <laughs> sort of turned up to ask a question, swinging this bat dress like Negan, and I kind of thought, oh, that's really, everyone was going, oh, so cute. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking, yeah, but you've just dressed your child as a, 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 a psychopathic, you know, <laughs> baseball bat murdering, you know, sweary bloke. And I'm just thinking, really, is that appropriate? <laughs> So is there is would you say Negan's your favorite character character currently or Yeah, probably. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, because he's um especially after doing the 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 Image Plus stuff. Um I've realized I, we all knew he was a complex man anyway. Um but this just adds about 10 more layers to the character. And as much as I love the governor, you know, you know, the two big bads of The Walking Dead, I suppose, arguably, um, you know, the governor was a lot more one note. And Negan just has so many more layers to him. And, you know, long may he continue. <laughs> are, there, uh, are there any characters, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just personally curious, are there any characters that have been uh, offed that you, you regretted uh, seeing, seeing them go? Um, no, because the, the whole point of The Walking Dead is, you know, it, no one is safe, you know, including Rick. So, you know, that's kind of the magic of the book. Um, controversially, I was quite pleased to see Glenn go. <laughs> um, only because I never, never, I know this sounds weird, but I never, after nearly a hundred issues, never got really to grips with drawing him. And um, I don't know, there's just something with the, his face shape. I don't know what it was, just something that I was never 100%. I just couldn't get, I just could not get. And so when, when we decided to beat the living daylights out of his face, um, I was like, ah, oh, cool, great. <laughs> don't have to draw Glenn anymore. <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> Uh, and for anybody that's uh, not not aware, hasn't seen it, we actually have a. Sorry, uh, was that a spoiler? <laughs> we we have we have an action figure two pack at the booth that has a smashed in Glenn head. It's Negan and Glenn with a smashed in Glenn head. So it's you know it's it's out there. People yeah, yeah, find yeah. It. yeah. I so mean, my, fa my favorite bit of that panel 
where he does get you know, the splash page of his mushed up face. <laughs> uh, the best thing about that for me was the hand in the foreground. I thought I drew a really good hand. <laughs> <laughs> it, was an, it was a nice hand. It was a really nice hand. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, we, we, you know, we've gone over the, the books that we have coming up, um, and I'd like to open it up to, to questions now. So we have a, a microphone in the center there. Um, oh, wow, especially for the con. Look at yes. that. Hey. Uh, so how, you guys how many, how many all... hours did that take you to conceive? Oh, it was like five, five seconds. <laughs> uh, so yeah, if you can just line up back there at the mic, uh, we'll take your questions one at a time. Um, and after you... After you ask your question, if you want to come up, I will give you a copy of uh, Green Valley. Um, cool. So yeah, we got people lining up. Uh, starting with you, uh, Aquaman. What's what's your question? What's what's your name? First off, uh, my name is Jordan. Uh, Aquaman, you've lost weight. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, I work in the toy industry, and we always, we often get the question, how long does it take to get a model into market? So I'd be quite interested to know how how long does it take for one issue to go from you know planning it to being released. Do you, I'll, I'll let the panel answer, but do you want to start, Charlie? I'm an artist. I don't know. I just draw the <laughs> bloody thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, I'm, uh, the funny thing with The Walking Dead is I, you know, I, I literally just draw the issues and, and um, everything else gets taken away from me. All, all the complicated stuff. I'm in a nice, like, sort of bubble about that. So I defer to my other colleagues on that one. <laughs> don't worry, I have the same. <laughs> I don't care about the production part. Well, uh, in, in the case of Horizon, uh, we did a lot of uh, kind of prep and development work before I even started writing scripts. So I think we, we spent, what was it, like six, seven months just kind of going back and forth with uh, different kind of like plot walkthroughs, um, kind of like character notes, figuring out who definitely needed to be in the book and who didn't. There were actually a lot more characters in the book before we uh, uh, whittled them down to four, but because because it's me, those characters are still in the book. They're just in a different place than, than they were originally. Was that before you knew it was going to be before published or, or uh, you were working kind on it? of yeah. yeah yeah that's why we were we were still working through uh, through the process to decide if it was something that uh, that Skybound definitely wanted to do but the the really cool part about that is when I started writing the scripts I felt very prepared like I felt like I really knew the characters and I really knew the world because we really put in that good six to nine months of time into really developing things and we knew what the book was supposed to be about, how it was supposed to feel, how the pacing was supposed to be. So um, that was something that I'm, I'm really thankful for because I think because of that, Horizon starts out on a much kind of stronger footing because I'm not feeling my way through it. Usually it takes like a couple of scripts before you really get a, a really good handle on, on the characters in the world. So I was, uh, I was grateful for that, for that kind of development time. Yeah. Uh, I just, you know, from, from my own personal experience, I, uh, I've edited at, at now two companies and, and it really it sort of depends. The development time is, is, can be anywhere from, you know, you, you basically you solicit the book and it's out three months later to the beauty of Skybound, the thing that I like what we do, and I, I'm sure you guys can speak to this as well, is that you know, we, we have a, a longer lead time and so creators can sort of you know, yeah. focus on the idea and really polish it up and really you know, hone in on, on what, makes, what, what makes it worth reading and, and what they like about it. It's, it's one of those things that I think you know, some of the other companies having to, to you know, constantly publish and constantly yeah. have stuff out, you sort of... I think you sort of lose what makes the book special or what makes them worth reading and it's just product. And I think what's really great about Skybound and what we do here is that every book has a lot of love and care into it, a lot of love and care in it and it also it's something that we really focus on. And so you know, we have books that have taken a year to come out, we have books that have taken less than that, more than that, but it's one of those things that it's really you sort of find what works best for the creators rather than it has to be out, you know, yeah. lockstep absolutely at this time. So it's, it's been nice. I, I don't know about... I, as a slow person who always misses his <laughs> deadlines, <laughs> I love you, Sean Makowitz. <laughs> uh, I will say Skybound is incredibly patient with their artists. This is the beauty of creator-owned comics. Yeah. You know, um, I cannot stress how great it is to be doing, you know, I think we all can, our own material rather than working for yeah, somebody else, working on yeah. somebody else's yeah. material and, and, and falling victim to all the things that that, that entails where, you know, like you were saying, publishers have to 
keep these characters in or as they either lose the license or or there's the, the the company above them is nagging them to keep these these products out there you know we have the luxury of not having to do that and i think you get a better result yeah great thank you thank you yes what's your name my name is wesley ruff and uh this question is for charlie adlard um with uh, Walking Dead has been popular for quite a while now, and you've yeah. been in the comic book industry for a very long time. And I'm wondering, with its popularity, uh, what is your working process like? Uh, how has it changed? Like when you worked on with Tops for X Files, and now with uh, The Walking Dead for Skybound and Image, did your process change? You mentioned that you got faster, and I'm just wondering if you could elaborate on that. Oh, I was actually faster with the X Files. God knows how. I don't. I don't know. I was younger, probably. Uh, well, obviously younger, probably. Um, yeah, I'm a time traveller. Uh, but um, it, it hasn't really changed. Not the actual working process. Um, I get up. My kids go to school. I start work. I do a kind of a nine to five regular um, work day. And when it's dinner time. I stop working. It's as simple as that. Um, I have done ever since I've started working this crazy industry, and um, I, I, it works for me. And yeah, like I'm, I'm an early riser. I get up quite early, so quite occasionally in weekends I'll get up at I don't know six in the morning and do a couple of hours even before anybody else has woken up, uh, which sort of keeps me on top of a few things. But apart from that, yeah, it's a very sort of steady. I'm, I'm quite a routine -y person, so um, I think that helps with, obviously, this freelancer way of life. But, yeah, I live in a small town in, in the English countryside. It, it's, in, in those sort of terms, it hasn't changed one bit. Yeah, the, the, the success of The Walking Dead, it, it, it's sort of over there somewhere. <laughs> you know, I don't even think about it. It's still the same drawing, drawing the comic book as I was drawing it from issue seven. Excellent, thank you. Thank you. Yes, what's your name? Hi, my name is Chris. Um, my question is for Charlie. What can Hello. we expect to see from the Image Plus for Negan coming up? What, coming up? Yeah. What can I talk about? Uh, uh, not much. Uh, oh. <laughs> Great. We can't give away um, too much. I mean, you, you got to pick up the book. Honestly, it is, you know, it, it, it just delves so much, so much into the character of Negan. Um, and... I'm kind of the opposite. Uh, uh, that I really prefer drawing the, the sort of the, the talking head character stuff, and um, and there's a lot of that in this, but in in a good way. Is that it's not just you know people talking in a room. There's a lot of sort of moving around, and uh, because it's it's sort of also dealing with the beginning of the apocalypse and everything as well. So Negan's finding his feet, dealing with that, and also meeting sort of various people on the way. Uh, after the, the the great tragedy of the first sort of couple of episodes, um, yeah, I mean, it, honestly, it, I, as I said before, I still think it's one of the best things Robert's written. And considering we had to be poked with a sharp stick to actually be persuaded to do it, <laughs> um, you know, I think we both sort of come up with stuff that's top of our game, which is kind of surprising since we were we were initially a bit reluctant to just just because of time. To, to do something like that, and in the end, it's you know after all the other little uh, sort of character ones we've done, like the Tyrese one and the Governor one, which were only six pages long. So all of a sudden, we're doing a sixty-page story. So some something's obviously good about it because we've both been fired up by it. Thank you. The thing I the thing I like about it's Negan is that it 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 makes. I love the top. It's Negan. <laughs> Ooh, he's it, a game show host. <laughs> it it makes him you know it's it's one of those things where he is sort of a jerk. I mean, well, he's definitely a jerk. Uh, but it, yeah, it, it to gives, begin with, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, it, but it, it it gives him you know a lot of heart. Like it's I I feel weirdly sympathetic for him. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's the any the best sort of villains. You've got to have some sort of not connection, but some sort of sympathy for. And and the, you know the greatest villains all believe that what they're doing is for the is for the greater good. That that's. That's the interesting thing about these guys, you know. But yeah, Negan is is a kind of a bit of a doofus at the beginning, <laughs> isn't he? And and you kind of think, oh yeah. But it kind of all just works with the character. Yeah. Uh, hey, what's uh, what's your name? I'm Samantha. 
Do you, can you lower the mic just a little bit? Oh. I'm Thank Samantha. You. Hi, what's Hi. your question? Sorry to talk about The Walking Dead, but it's uh. my favorite book. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to know, my favorite parts are Negan and Carl in scenes together. And I was wondering if that was coming up, and if so, if that would, if Negan would tell Carl his backstory, or if that would influence him more than Rick has influenced him and his future. Have to read the book. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, you've just asked questions I really can't answer. <laughs> um, sorry. Uh, yeah, that, I mean, yes, there will be stuff happening. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Quote me on that one. Hi, what's your name? Hi, my name's Christian. What's your question? Uh, this is for Mr. Adler. Um, <sighs> so, sorry, sorry to do this to you, but as you said, uh, Negan is one of your m favorite characters. Yeah. I want to ask, uh, how are your feelings on Alpha? Oh, Alpha? Um, my feelings on Alpha? Um, well, I also, again, I mean... She's an interesting... It's great to have a female villain, for starters. Um, I'll let you into a little secret. Uh, when Robert and I were designing Negan, um, at one point... I mean, I didn't really mention this to Robert, but I was think my thought process was thinking it'd be really cool to have Negan as a female, um, just because we'd had the governor as a male, so it sort of made sense to me to have Negan as a female. And, and I've got to admit, when Robert sort of said, oh, he's going to look like this and blah, 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 I... A tiny bit of me was a bit disappointed because oh, it's a shame she's not female. He's not female, but you know that that's been erased now because you know he's created such a great male character. So yeah, it's great to have a female villain and again another really really strong character. And yeah, I'm really enjoying drawing her as well because um, yeah, I, well, I can't really say any more <laughs> <laughs> because Thank that would spoil the spoiler, wouldn't it? <laughs> Thank you. Hi, what's your name? Hi, I'm Rebecca. Rebecca, um, what's your question? Oh, well, first, thank ask you for... somebody else a question. <laughs> for, <laughs> it's actually for all of you, and I appreciate Yay. you guys coming to the con and, up, and doing this for, for all of us, but you, your room is starting to fill with the next generation of writers and artists and, and you know, comic uh, enthusiasts. How do you stay motivated about your career, and what advice do you have to these kids out here? Uh, Chris, do you want to start? Uh, advice, career advice? Mm -hmm. Oh my God! I don't know. I, I've uh, if you, if you're if, as far as writing goes, just read as much as you can, and write like and write as much as you can, and eventually you'll just get better at it. Uh, that's that's really. I mean, because as far as career goes, I'm I'm used to the television industry, and I really just got lucky. Uh, I wish I wish I had some sort of plan, but it is just dumb blind luck. That's all. <laughs> Well, um, what, what I try to tell people, what was important for me when I was starting out, um, I, I've been writing stories since I was probably like seven or eight years old. I used to write these uh, in-between episodes of my favorite cartoon. So I used to write like in-between episodes of Thundercats and Voltron and stuff. And like, you know, what if Mumra did this? Or what if the Sword of Omens dropped into a chasm? You know, so all these like kind of like stupid things. And uh, that kind of just evolved. So when I was in high school, I started to write short stories. Uh, they really weren't that short. Like I was the kid that uh, we would have like a five page, you know, like write a little five page story and I would turn in like 25, like in a binder because I couldn't put a, fit a staple in it. <laughs> so uh, what, I, what I try to tell people starting out is what was important for me was to uh, kind of like set little benchmarks for myself. Very kind of like achievable things. Uh, when I was in college and I was trying to figure out how to actually script comic books, I would get up in the morning and before I went to sleep, I had to script like a little three-page comic, like a three-page fight sequence or um, conversation, argument. And what I found was that as I proved to myself that I could actually start and finish things, it kind of became a habit. It's kind of like exercise. You, you try to make it a part of your life. You make it a part of your routine. So it's just something that you're doing every day or every couple of days. And there's always, you can always find the time. Even if you can only find a little time, do the best you can with what you have. But uh, my advice would be to, to set benchmarks, keep 
hitting them because it'll it'll embolden you and it'll encourage you to keep going and you just keep adding a little more and a little more and a little more and then once you look up and you you finished some like large epic thing that you never thought you could have finished when you started but i would say start small uh, Wong, such a better answer than mine. <laughs> <laughs> I really like. I really let you. I was actually kind of happy when you when you said that. I was like, oh, I can do better than that. Uh, Juan, do you do you have any any uh, advice uh, on the art side? Yeah. Um, well, uh, when I was starting, like uh, a comic page would take me like a week, and I would go every day and touch this and touch that. And the more you do it, you get faster. And with practice, the good thing is that you can draw and you can work even if you don't feel like it. Because sometimes you're super excited about something and sometimes you just have to draw. And um, it's like, and it still has to look good. So that's what you, what you get with, uh, with practice. Um, something that really helped me improve is uh, I was copying uh, drawings from other artists, but that kind of, uh, it's, it's not very good. So I would start like um, copying from pictures from real life. Uh, I would grab like an ad geo or a fitness magazine or sports magazine and I would draw from that. Uh, so that way you can understand how the body works, how the clothes, uh, the wrinkles and facial expressions. And once you uh, are able to do that, then you can translate it into your own language. When, when I draw faces, I just, my style is very simple. Sometimes my eyes are just two dots and a line for the mouth and that's it. Uh, but I try to keep like a realistic um, structure or base. Because if you do something very wacky, uh, people might not uh, relate to that. But if you keep it grounded like in reality, like the Simpsons, they, they are yellow and they have big eyes and whatnot, but they move like real people. So that's my, my advice. Yeah. Thank you. So, sorry, I, I was going to shut up, but um, thank you for including me in saying that I'm the next generation, because I appreciate that, because I'm very old. Um, so thanks. And yeah, just a few practical things. Um, if you're an artist, study life drawing. If you can find life drawing classes, do them. Um, if you've got a portfolio, have, I mean, I know this sounds really dumb, but have sequential artwork in there. Don't just show, show people, editors, whatever, portfolios, just a big splash pages and stuff, because they're gonna wanna see storytelling. And last but not least, and again, I know this sounds really dumb, but I've seen it so many times. Have your best work at the front. Don't have it at the back. Don't make excuses for stuff. If you're making excuses, it shouldn't be in there. So. <laughs> And, and just have six pages, six, eight, ten pages maximum. Don't have a massive portfolio of, of 200 pages and then this editor's just looking through the stuff and you're constantly going, oh yeah, I shouldn't have put that one, I'm really sorry, that, that, oh, that's bad. You know, just have your best, most recent work and you know, if you don't need to make excuses about it, that's, that's what you should have in. Enough yeah. said. Thank you and Thank congratulations you. on your success. Thank you. Hi, what's your name? What's your hi, question? I'm, hi, I'm Josh. Uh, I'm actually a Horizon question. Um, hey, thank you. <laughs> uh, is there any uh, like other work or stories that really inspired your design choices or characters in these series? Ooh. Yeah, yeah, a lot. Um, I'm a huge fan of uh, video games and Japanese stuff. So stuff like Metal Gear, Metal Gear Rising, uh, Street Fighter, uh, all the stuff helped me when I was designing the, the characters. And I'm a huge fan of Blame. It's a Japanese comic f by Tsutomu Nihei. That was a huge influence on the designs. And uh, yeah, I mean, with the pages uh, and the action sequence and some details, uh, I think one of m my favorite artists right now is James Herron. I like Cory Walker from Invincible, so I try to like uh, find a, try to combine that and hopefully it will work. And uh, yeah, that, that's it. There's some Evangelion in there too. Yeah. And the design work and also in- uh, uh, Well, I, I see in the covers, those amazing covers, Saul Bass. 
Do you like yeah. Saul Bass? Yes, yes. Yeah. That's actually what we've been calling them. I've been calling them our, yeah. our Saul Bass abstract covers for Horizon. <laughs> so it was, it, was a, it was a nice surprise because I had never imagined anything like that for the book. But when Jason's first cover came through with, you know, Zaya standing kind of like on the dead moon with the earth in the background, it just, it really worked. And I was like, wow. So every, every cover that we've done has been a little, a little more, uh, a, little, a little cooler than the last one. So be on the lookout for uh, the cover to issue six. So cool. some people may be upset with me with, for that one, but uh, they'll get over it. It's cool. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, last question. What's, uh, oh, yep, mm. you. Yeah. yeah. What's, what's your name? Hi, my name is Steve. Um, this is for all of you. I was wondering, do you feel that it is, do you believe it's different being able to work on creator-owned properties versus what the experience might be working on more institutionally owned properties, for example, at Marvel and DC? Do you get more creative freedom or things like that? Just be interested to hear your thoughts. Uh, I've, I've only worked, this is, Manifest Destiny is my only comic work, so that's all I know. I only know from what I hear from other people, and it sounds like I probably have more creative control. Let's just you from do. Rumors <laughs> and innuendo. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a completely different world. Um, also, from the fact that uh, there, there's just an understanding. I mean, I I know everything about these characters. Like, I know these characters inside and out. Uh, I don't need to do research. Like, I don't need to read any old issues. So, uh, so practically, it, it's just a lot easier to figure out what everyone is going to do and what everyone is going to say. And uh, Skybound has been enormously collaborative from the beginning. And for me, I love comics so much. I love working in comics. And it's supposed to be fun. We're supposed to be having fun making these things. And I've never had more fun writing and making comics than I have with, with Skybound. It's amazing. It's, it's not, comparing it to, it, it's not even close. It's not even in the same like neighborhoods, not even in the same zip code as, as doing stuff for Marvel. I mean, I had a seven page like Civil War II uh, story that came out on the exact same day as Horizon number one and no one even cared. Like my name wasn't even on the cover of the Marvel book. So I like ran into people that didn't even realize I had a story in there. So, uh, but that's good because Horizon's better and it's cooler. And you know, I was glad that it kind of overtook the Marvel stuff, so. Uh, well, I think that's that's all the time we we have. Unfortunately, creator and comics, yay! Yeah, yeah, no, no, Skybound forever. <laughs> Woo! Uh, so, thank you all for coming out. Uh, you know, check out all the books that we have coming up. Uh, we have a really, really, really exciting year planned. Uh, you know, and and check out everything that we do. So, thank you very much. <laughs>